Hi everybody, this is Glenn Gerhauser from Church on the Park, and I want to share with you today how to engage an online church. Almost all the world has to go to online church at this time, and so I want to give you five tips about how to engage an online church. These are things that came to me as I've been praying. I'm specifically speaking them to my own church, Church on the Park, but I'm hoping that it could be a resource that any church could use. So let me start off with a scripture here. Ephesians chapter 2, uh, verse 21 in the NIV version. In him, the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him, you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by his spirit. Here, Paul is describing the church as a building, but not a physical building, a spiritual building. In other words, God's people are God's temple, and we are meant to host God's presence. So my first tip for uh, engaging an online church is host God's presence. So wherever you are, if you're in a in your home or you're in a room or with your or you're with your family, you want to host God's presence. It's not just about watching church online. It's or even just watching preaching, it's about engaging and uh, as I'm going to say uh, as I'm going to say later, it's about participating. So be intentional. Be intentional uh, when you gather together, when your church is meeting, when it's broadcasting live. Be intentional. Our goal is to facilitate church in your home. And what God's put on my heart is God in the home. This season is all about God coming and invading your home and God being present in your home and God being dynamic and moving in your home. And this is all possible as you host God's presence. So how can you do that? How can you host God's presence? Well, it's simple. Welcome God's presence in prayer. Welcome him in prayer. And remember what Jesus said, Matthew eighteen twenty, for where two or three have gathered together in my name, I am there in their midst. So if we are gathering in his name, that's what we need to do. We need to gather in his name. And if we are gathering in his name, then he is there in our midst. So welcome him, value him, value him together as a family, or if you're by yourself, or you're with uh, two or three people, welcome him, value him. And uh, I want to encourage you, take this time seriously. Take Sunday morning seriously. Gather your family or whoever is there and, and pray and honor God with that time. It's a sacred time where God wants to do something uh, awesome in our lives. So that's the first point is host God's presence. The second point is participate in the worship preaching and prayer. So participate in the worship preaching and prayer. When the worship is going on, sing out loud. When the preaching is going on, say amen. Um, take notes. So when the preaching is going on, take notes. What God is showing you, revealing to you, take notes. Um, really make this not just watching church and eating popcorn like you would watch a movie. Participate. Be there. Uh, pray out loud. Uh, say amen, uh, worship together. Um, we are hearing God's word together. So our goal is though we're physically separated, we want to be in spirit together. We want to be one in spirit. We want to be spiritually unified and in fellowship and participation together. So um, even though we're at a distance, we're worshiping together, we're praying together, we're hearing the word together. Now, my third point, my third point is share the service. This is a great opportunity to share what God is speaking and doing. So share the service with others. And you can do this. You can share it on Facebook. Uh, you can share it through a text message. You can share it through other social media. But while the church is going on, share it with others. 
Um, somebody may not be included in an email or text messages. So text them, let them know what's going on. And let's make sure that we are including singles, widows, orphans, people that are hurting, and especially new believers. So if you are allowed, invite one person over, maybe two. If you're allowed, invite somebody over and have church with them. Right now in Australia, we can have these very small uh, micro gatherings of two or three people. Um, wherever you are, you have to obey the government restrictions so that this so that this virus doesn't spread some more some more so but uh, no matter what include people and also share what god is doing through things like zoom zoom is an excellent tool we're going to use it as a church and so we're going to have a pre uh service prayer meeting on zoom and then afterwards i'm hoping that we have a zoom uh, time after the service so we have a zoom time of prayer praying for one another discussion and ministering to one another so before and after the service we're looking to use zoom um your church may be doing something different but uh, whatever you do uh share the service now four give to your church this is a time more than ever where your church needs your giving, your tithes and offerings. Now your giving is like oil, which keeps the lamp stand of your church burning bright. In the Old Testament, the people of God had to bring oil and they brought their oil to keep the lamp stand in the temple burning. And it was the responsib responsibility of the whole community to bring the oil. So I want to encourage you, give online, continue tithes and offerings, because we want to see the work of God continue in our nation, Australia, and the nations of the world. Now, five, and the last point, the last tip, is stay connected with God's family. During this time, stay connected with God's family. Uh, we can't meet physically, but we can still stay connected. Things like phone and texting and uh, uh, video conferencing, Zoom or FaceTime or etc. Stay connected. If God puts someone on your heart, reach out to them, text them, call them, pray with them, share a verse of scripture with them. Let this be a time where God's people get closer together rather than further away. And this is a great opportunity for it. Let us redeem this time. Uh, be serious, be intentional about this time. And again, don't forget new believers because new believers will be a bit more shaken by this. Singles, people that are alone, the elderly, the hurting, let's not forget them. And lastly, I want to say, support your leaders and pastors. This is a very difficult time for pastors and leaders. I know for myself, I've been up late into the night trying to get everything together um, so that the church can continue to be a light in the world. This is a time that pastors and leaders need your encouragement. Let your pastor know you are with them, you are helping them, you are supporting them. Um, pray for them and just share the love. So let me pray with you. Those are my five tips for online church. Father, here we are in the, a time where we've never been before. And like the Jews of old, we put the blood on the doorpost of our home that the angel of death would pass over. You would keep viruses away from our house and family. And also, Father, that we would host your presence in our homes and that church would continue to burn brightly. And this would be a season and time of revival. Father, that's what I'm praying for everybody hearing this. Move by the power of your spirit. Do amazing things. Help us, Lord. Shield us. We give everything to you in Jesus' name. God bless you. This is Glenn Gerhauser signing out.